Today I'm going to be doing a little mini review of the Leader LSG 231 FM Stereo Signal Generator. I'm not exactly sure when this thing came out. I think it came out somewhere in the early 70s or so. Um, all I know that it was priced at about $300, which for back in the day that was uh, pretty cheap. The this little um, stereo generator, basically all it is, is a little um, a little FM transmitter, and which you can use to check out and um, basically align uh, stereo FM stereo equipment. Now, as far as power is concerned, I think this is a multi voltage unit, so it would be. 120 or 230 volts Now let me go ahead and start with the controls here. See I've got to turn on Here this is the off on switch. Here's pilot light down here are uh, Jacks for external modulation Basically you can go ahead and feed in a signal from a cassette player a record player or probably even a CD player um and you use that as a troubleshooting tool. Um, and right here it says there's a pre-emphasis switch and it's got uh, three settings, 50 microseconds off and 75 microseconds. That's because um, basically this, this, works, this works together with this and Basically, what the pre-emphasis means that what what happens is that the high frequencies are boosted, uh, basically at the transmitter, and that increases the signal to noise ratio. And as far as I remember, the 75 microsecond setting that would be used in USA, and 50 microsecond setting down here that would be used in Europe, basically, because. Um, Say if you were to, if you were to feed in a signal here, it wouldn't be pre-emphasized. So what you would have to do here, because once it comes out at the other end at the tuner, it's going to be de-emphasized. Um, so you could do that in that case here. I guess you could check the uh, pre the de-emphasis circuits. Coming over to the left here, uh, there is a function switch, which is. Um, has a total of two, four, five different settings. The external modulation, okay, you put it in that setting when I would just, that's just what I had basically uh, talked about when you're feeding in, when you're feeding in external signal. I have to point out here, it says internal one kilohertz. That means uh, it's got an internal one kilohertz oscillator, which is going to modulate here the higher, uh, basically the higher frequencies. Um, right now, I've got this thing in the L minus R position. The L minus R, basically, that's called the stereo signal, because basically what this does, this makes a stereo effect possible, and this is going to consist of frequencies from 23 to 53 kilohertz. And basically, this contain, contains a suppressed subcarrier and the sidebands. Um, I'm saying contains a sub, suppressed sub, subcarrier. It's not there, basically. I, th I think it, as far as I remember, it, it, this was done because if you remove the subcarrier, then you can boost the overall signal level of the sidebands, and that's an advantage. And next position would be the L plus R position here and that's also called a mono signal and this is basically the main channel which consists of the frequencies of 50 to 15,000 Hertz and that frequency basically that frequency modulates the main carrier uh, when I mean main carrier I mean whatever the frequency the station is assigned to let's say it was a hundred megahertz um, that would be the main carrier at that time. So, and basically, I should point out there are 
two subcarriers. One is the main RF carrier I just mentioned. Uh, that's of the station and the subcarrier, which is that's much lower in frequency. The subcarrier, of course, that is that uh, 38 kilohertz suppressed carrier I was talking about. That's uh, re basically removed at the um, transmitter. So then we come over here to the left. That's basically the left composite signal. And this here would be the right composite signal. And the 67 kilohertz um, signal. I think that, that that had something to do before with... I remember back in the old days when you had like Supermark music and the SCA that was for like your background music that was called... Um, subsidiary communications authorization or something like that and I think in this case what you would use it for you would probably feed in a 67 kilohertz signal and then if this is like an older tuner then you would probably try to tune or attenuate that signal as much as possible in the tuner now if we come over here um, this is a uh, pilot signal section and um, basically this puts out a 19 kilohertz um, sine wave and this has to be on if not you're not going to get any stereo basically coming out of course it's an indicator light blue indicator light telling me that it's on um, and if you notice I talked about 38 kilohertz subcarrier. Well, this is 19 kilohertz. This is exactly half that. And a 19 kilohertz signal, that basically you really can't hear that, especially at such a low, especially at such a low level. Because remember, I think I said that the uh, the L plus R signal, which that had consisted from 50 to 15,000 kilohertz, then comes the, after that comes the 19 kilohertz pilot signal and then comes the sidebands which I had talked about and those were from 23 to 53 kilohertz. Now here's the composite output jack and the amplitude can be controlled here with this potentiometer here and also this doubles to turn the basically to turn the um, the 100 100 megahertz uh, oscillator on and off the RF output. I think this can be adjusted here plus or minus one megahertz. That's the only thing I didn't like about this unit um, because if you're, if you're living like for example in an urban area there might already be something right around that. Um, we got so many channels that uh, they would be interfering with what you're basically trying to do. But that's I, I couldn't say that I disliked anything else about this thing. I mean, I didn't pay very much money for this thing, to be honest. I got it off of eBay, and of course it was uh, used. So again, if you uh, pull this out, you were to turn the RF off. If you have a coax cables, this um, stereo generator has it's a 75 ohm uh, output impedance. And... Uh, that's the kind of cable you would best best to have. Now I just use this thing. I really don't do alignments. I just do do it to, to troubleshoot basically. And I always just use the highest, basically the highest level here. In fact, a lot of times I don't even bother to do impedance matching. I just hook the whole thing with the. Uh, coax cable here I just took it straight up to the back of the antenna because I don't think it's just for troubleshooting I don't think it's uh, critical I have to point out that this this normally comes with an original cable and a special matching network of course you never you never get those for some reason people that sell them they're always gone you're lucky to even get a instruction booklet So I just I've got the manual here, and I just looked at the output uh, the output settings here. Um, the output settings are it's the three steps, three steps uh, attenuator, 
and it said one would be 10 millivolts and the other one is 1 millivolt and the last one the low setting is 0.1 millivolt again normally I don't even bother to do that I just interested in something coming out or not and of course this when you're in RF position uh, you've got a choice and it works together with this you can go ahead and feed in a mono signal stereo signal left and right or uh, even the 67 kilohertz signal or whatever also have to point out that the stereo separation is supposed to be 50 decibels at 1 kilohertz and it's supposed to be better than 35 decibels I believe from 50 to 15 uh, 50 Hertz to 15 kilohertz of course the higher you go the more your separation is going to go down so but still for 50 um, decibels now that was uh, pretty good especially I think again as I, I don't want to repeat myself I think this unit was only like $300 back in the day which was for FM stereo generator pretty cheap it's a also it's very it's a very compact I don't even think it's uh, might be eight nine inches wide and only like three inches high and only weighs a couple of pounds which is good for me because my uh, workbench is only one square yard and that's all I have to work with so now as the last thing what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, show a couple of waveforms and for think for that since uh, my oscilloscope's on the top shelf I'm gonna have to drag it down which I don't like to do disconnect things and set it up and then I'll go ahead and show the waveforms coming out now what we're looking at here is a 19 kilohertz pilot signal which is basically a sine wave um, now I'm going to go ahead and show the composite output here so now I'm on external modulation and um, let me go ahead and turn the see here's the pilot signal that's then interjected into that now I'm in the L minus R position and you can see right here you could actually feed this signal into the input pin of the multiplex uh, chip on your tuner if you're looking at if you're working on a more modern piece of equipment um, this here is the L plus R of course the mono and uh, this, this camera here is showing that trace that trace is actually pretty thin but the the uh, camera shows it to be really thick oddly enough and here is your left composite signal I uh, don't know if that can be seen here you really can't see that that good maybe if I turn this down even more okay like that that's your left and here's basically the right you really can't tell the difference just the phase is different you really can't see that and of course this is this should be the 67 kilohertz signal right there now as a last thing I'm just gonna go ahead and hook up my uh, um, coax cable here and then get I think I got that still got that little pioneer receiver that'll fit here on this uh, workbench too and hook it up straight to the back of that and demonstrate what's uh, coming out now you can see I managed to squeeze this receiver onto my workbench and here are the alligator clips from this cable here and you can distinctly hear something coming out now And see when that's once I turn this down, I see there's a station almost on that same, I guess pretty close to that frequency, whatever, if it's a hundred or whatever, um, hundred megahertz. And I've got it all the way up now. And right now I'm in the L minus R the stereo position. And I can hear something coming out of both loudspeakers, which are now connected to this receiver. And if I do same thing, if I do the L plus R mono, I got the same coming out from both loudspeakers now. I only do the L 
I've got sound coming out from only one speaker and if I do the R I've got sound come only coming from the other speaker also I should point out the um, that level can again that can be adjusted with this and that can also be shut off I'm in the mono position now go back to stereo I've got the volume of course turned down and what I gotta do now is turn the stereo on and you can get a nice loud signal coming out there okay now I've got the scope poked up as a last demonstration um, I've got the pilot signal on and here's the L minus R the stereo signal you can see it's coming out and um, both these signals are out of phase and now I'm in the L plus R mono position both signals are in phase. Now if I go to the um, L position, I've got the L signal. This is what's coming out of the right channel of the receiver. And here, the opposite. I've got now you got something coming out of the right, and you got a little bit coming out of the left. This is how you, basically you would also by switching between the left and right how you would check stereo separation. And um, I think basically that would be it. Now if we remove the pilot signal here, then we would get exactly nothing. But the mono signal, that doesn't depend upon the pilot. But the stereo actually does. So I don't think I have anything else to add. I do have to say you need some prior FM stereo knowledge in order to use this thing I don't think you can just jump I don't think you can just jump into it without any prior knowledge so you have to do some reading first um, but sources are all over the internet and um, that way you kind of know what you're doing not like how some people do it they google stuff and if they have a problem somewhere and they just blindly follow um, whatever information they come up with do this and do that but they don't know why they're doing anything which is not too good um, you should at least know a little bit why you're doing something um, thanks for watching